Are you on the RCR mailing list? Never miss a beat of the news and hard-hitting stories you've come to know and love. Stay in the loop. Visit realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the Darlene Tana and Green Party issues. We heard what Matt McCartan thought. Let's see what the buddies think. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Oh, hi, Cam. Yes. It's good to have you there too. Ah, yes. Well, well, you know, can't do without me. <laughs> no, it's a highlight of my week. <laughs> so, you know, what's going on with the Greens? What are your thoughts on the I'm, – I'm more interested in the Greens rather than the individual people like Darlene Tarner or Golrez Garriman. There seems to me to be an issue in the Greens. What do you reckon? Well, um, there's four words they've never heard of, and mm. they are accountability, integrity, honesty, and decency. They know all about and, hypocrisy, though, don't they? Pardon? They know all about hypocrisy. They know that word. Well, I don't think they do know it. They don't even realise um, that it exists, do they? Uh, I mean, they practice it, yes. Mm. But do they realise they're practising it? But I think you're right, you know. If you think back to the Green Party of old with Jeanette Fitzsimons and Rod Donald, I think they had integrity and I think they had honesty and they were earnest about what they believed. But this lot, they seem to be all over the place. I mean, they're great at protesting and they're great at sloganeering, but when it comes to actually being decent human beings, they seem to be a bit uh, lacking. No, well, I think they're the modern-day... Um element that have crept into politics actually, they are motivated by greed <clears throat> and this last case is a man manipulation of uh, immigrants and cheating the system uh, I can't think of a worse example of how uh, politics should be, to be honest um, we've had the shoplifting case, we've had that um, pushed under the guise of mental health, health. Yep. Um, which I'm not sure whether it is or not, but it certainly seems an extraordinary thing to do, to just go around shoplifting high-end um, clothing. Just, we, we've also had uh, James Shaw, you know, I mean, he, he couldn't even get his um, online profile correct, and he, for a long time he left it there, he said he had a BA, BA from Victoria University. Yeah, he said he had a bugger um, and, all, but he actually had a never did. Exactly. Hmm. And um, then we've got two members who I have to carefully say appear to be, have been involved with the shoplifting case. Yep. And you and I both know who they were. Well, you know... So some... um, I just think there's just absolutely no ethics whatsoever. It's rather like the militant activists behind the Maori party, they are sort of tarred with the same brush. They're in there for greed, enriching themselves, not helping their own people at all. And um, can I just quote you the Green Party statement on, mm. on their um, website? Sure. Meet our, meet our MPs who are hard at work fighting for people and planet. Now, does that fit what we're experiencing? Well, you know, um, I guess Golrez Garriman was working hard to pinch other people's hard work. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Darlene Tana was working hard to enrich their family by exploiting migrant workers, uh, allegedly. She was. Mm. But and I'm not of course, she interested might... in the planet. No, and like you say, those original ones uh, in the Green Party, they sort of capitalised on people's emotions for the planet and for people. Um, and I think they did sort of start off in that vein, <clears throat> but they're certainly a long way from it today. Well, I mean, yeah. they're actually an absolute joke. And if we only were allowed to have political satire again, you can imagine... Um, 
you can imagine the skits on on them. Mm. I mean, you know, it's often said by people with a bit, bit tongue in cheek, but it's probably pertinent um, that uh, the Greens put the mental into environmental. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> that would be right, wouldn't it? I can remember having a discussion with James Shaw once um, outside TV3's um, headquarters one morning, and I'd just been on TV and he was due to come in. And I said to him, you know what, I should be a Green Party voter. He says, why is that? He says, you wouldn't be a Green Party person. Cam, I said, look, we all want the same things. I, you know, I'm a hunter. Um, I'm in the bush a lot. I want, you know, pristine bush. I want clean water. Uh, I like going to the beach. I want to see the ability for everybody to have access to beaches and, and the, the water there is clean and not polluted. I want all of these things, but what I don't want is all of the taxes that you want to keep um, slamming people with, which, by the way, won't uh, clean up any of those things. And I don't want your communism um, policies that uh, take from everyone who's worked hard and give it to those who don't work at all. And and he said, oh, well, I guess we have to agree to disagree, and then went inside, and that was the, the, the extent of the discussion. But I thought... You know, they're missing the point here. There are a vast number of people like me who want all of these things. We all want the same things. Nobody wants polluted water. Nobody wants, you know, forests being cut down. We don't want those things. But they can't attract people like me to them because of the the crazies. As I said, the mental and the environmental. Well, I just think they're total hypocrites, I'm sorry to say. Um, and if you went out hunting, um, they wouldn't want you actually shooting uh, any venison and bringing that home, so that one would be out the door. Yep. Um, but um, I was quite interested in the um, Darlene Tana case in that, because <clears throat> I did read it, oh, it must be six or eight weeks ago, they had the case or investigation of it and actually stuff actually had it online. Mm. So I'd have to give them a very rare bit of praise, actually, for doing that. Um, But it was sort of around, mainly around these um, immigrant workers. But nobody mentioned, um, when when she paid them in cash, nobody's mentioned yet about, what about... um, Income tax, what about holiday pay and health and safety compliance and all that stuff that other um, business owners, you know, have to abide by? What about all of that? And I understand that um, she, well, it looks like she's claimed essential workers government subsidy during the COVID as well. Mm. Um, Mm. Now, all of these things, they're, they're all the rottenest crimes against humanity that you can have in New Zealand, in it's my opinion. Rotten as a weak old chicken leg, isn't it? Terrible. Mm. Absolutely terrible to take advantage of people coming into New Zealand on visas and or different visas from what she hired them for. And then the other thing is, um, isn't she the green spokesperson for small business? I'm not sure if she is or um, El, El Woco Loco, the Mexican bandit, um, is the is the person who's responsible for that. I'm not sure. But, I mean, any business that involves no. policies is going to be a small business anyway, isn't it? I mean, there's no profit. Yeah, well, it's just profit. that I can, I can remember way back to when that was online, and I remember, well, I think I remember, um, that she was named as, as the spokesperson for small business because at the time I thought, how extraordinary, and here she is, um, donkey deep in her husband's business and ripping people off. And um, allegedly, you know, what's going to happen with her? Shouldn't she? Shouldn't she be charged with something? Well, I mean, I guess uh, that's up to. Um, I guess that's up to up to the authorities. I mean, I, I guess immigration will be looking at these cases. But, you know, earlier I spoke to Matt McCartan and he said to me, what's damning is not all the allegations, it's the fact that not a single person from the Waiheke community has come out and said, uh, Darlene Tan is an awesome person 
Uh, she's a wonderful advocate for us, and uh, we'd like to see her stay as an MP. He says that's damning that the local community has remained utterly silent on Darlene Tana and yeah. the elections. Yes, well, she she may have more influence there than we know about, of course. There are such things as leverage. Well, yeah, it's, Waiheke's a small place, and everybody knows is everybody. Oh, it's very, I mean, there's only about 8,000 people who live there permanently, and everybody knows everybody, and they all know each other's business. But, um, you know, you, they're very quick to support people or whatever, but, you know, I've got a few contacts in Waiheke, and they're telling me that it's been well known for a long time in the community that you, that they take advantage of migrant workers um, and also youth workers. Um, and I know okay. I know of one youth worker who uh, was paid well under the minimum wage and told to shut up uh, when it came to 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 any of that. Well, I mean, that's absolutely disgraceful. It's it's really a sanitised form of slavery, really. Well, I just looked up the parliamentary well, website uh, for, for Darling Tana because she's still listed there. Um, and her spokesperson roles were digitising government, internal affairs, media and communications, oceans and fisheries, overseas New Zealanders and science, innovation and technology. So no small business. No, well, obviously, either I've read that wrong or, or it was reported wrong, one or the other. Um, but anyway, she's got heap, heaps of uh, tasks there that she should be paying attention to, not not running her husband's uh, bike business. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make sense that she would say she knew nothing about the way the business was run because there was a husband and wife team. She didn't know everything about the business was run, how the business was run. And, and Steve Gilgallan, that stuff. I mean, one of the probably one of the best uh, investigative journalists in New Zealand, even though he works for that ragged stuff. Uh, he he got quotes from people that they were negotiating with with uh, Darlene Tana, and she was paying them in cash and all of those sorts of things. So she she's donkey deep in it all for sure. And there needs to be oh, some absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I recall of that original investigation. Um, the the uh, migrants they were well she's treated them like halfwits um, because I think they were Argentinian from memory um, but yeah. what she didn't realise is that they've actually taped her if you go back to that original inquiry from that journalist you're talking about they taped her on their smartphones every conversation just about yep so. She's really backed into a corner, if she's going to be charged, that is. I mean, these MPs, they seem able to completely escape uh, justice. She's not accountable at all, and I think it's a disease through um, politics at the moment. Yep, unaccountability of politicians and elites, and we see that in the way that they're treated. Anyway, yeah. Uh, mm. Lindley, I've got another call lined up behind you, so I better take that. Thank you so much for calling into Cam's Buddies, and we'll talk again next week. Yeah, lovely to hear from you, Cam. See you later. Bye bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you back. Thank you for having me. How are you this day? I'm fantastic, thank you. As I always am. You know the rules around asking questions like that. I do indeed. Yeah. So I'll go with hello. <laughs> Uh, the question I've got for you, or the issue I've got for you today, is what on earth is going on inside the Green Party as an organisation and the Darlene Tana revelations of migrant exploitation uh, and, and all the shenanigans around that, what your thoughts are as, as a former employer or a current employer of, of people? What do you think about all this? Well, I think it's quite interesting that if someone's been hired or well, they've got a visa that says that they're a fruit picker mm. and then they don't have any work as a fruit picker, what do they have? So so why is it that they don't have work as a fruit picker? And so if, if um, Darlene has said, okay, you've got no work at that, maybe you could work for me in the bicycle shop. Now, um, if that's what's happened, everybody talks about 
exploitation of immigrants. Well, well what does that mean? Who mm. said it's exploitation? Could it be helping the immigrants who have had a, a promise of a job, but the job has failed to materialise? And then when they're saying, well, we're not sure what we can do here, and she says, oh, well, my husband's got a business, we could try out on something like this. Mm. That's very charitable, I realise. But that sort of thing has happened to a number of people that I know. And if the contract for picking has finished sooner than they thought, or for some reason the cops were different, were ready at a different time or whatever, and they've come with some other thing, that's very interesting. So, so lots of these stories have more than one slant. But the fact that the Greens have no problem defending the likes of an absolute thief and then throw under the bus someone who's actually um, been a director, sure, but she finished being a director of that company um, more than a year ago. Mm. And then her husband may or may not have done different things. And, and to, be, to be sort of um, tarred with the same brush as your, as your husband, regardless, like many, if I talk to many of my friends, their wives aren't actually sure what their business does. Still, it was, and maybe they should find out, don't know. So I think there could be more to the story than meets the eye. And then I see that she's got a, convic- a, a, um, a prosecution pending and the Greens took her to the police for not having a sponsor on an ad or a campaign ad. And I'm mm. thinking, well, now that's got a different aroma to it. So they really want her gone and they're threatening her with, well, we'll take criminal proceedings against you for something that whilst it's wrong, if that's the first electoral fraud crime we've seen, we haven't been around much. Yeah, well, so that's... I'm thinking, wow, they're actually really never going, having, a, having a go at her. Now, if I was her, I'd dig in and say, give me some of that free public money and I'll stay here for three years and just milk it dry. Well, that's what it looks like is going to happen. But I think you're right. There is more to this than meets the eye. I mean, I've got sources that are telling me that uh, the the migrant exploitation stories uh, do have some uh, element of truth to them, but there's a lot uh, that's been missed out. And it looks like, exactly as you say, a, a fit-up job for the Greens that have decided the face doesn't fit or, or they, they perhaps don't get on with her, so let's use this to chuck her under the bus. Um, and, and yeah. you know, the, they're... They're also cornered themselves, though, because they've opposed vociferously over many, many years the Walker jumping bill. And so that's why you saw them on Monday night uh, begging, you know, it looked quite pathetic, actually, begging for her to resign. And, and she basically flipped the middle finger at them and said, uh, this isn't right. Uh, I'm digging in and stopping. So I think we've got a whole lot more entertainment to come and a whole lot more revelations to come. You see, I, I know that in the political scene, there's always another turn to the story. They sell it one way, but when the media says safe and effective, and I know, well, that's not necessarily true. When they say this is the podium of truth, I think, yeah, well, I'm not sure that's true either. When they say um, Russia, 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 overseas media, I'm not sure that's true. And so now they're saying, here's a woman exploiting migrants. Well, really? Well, tell us what she did. Oh, she gave them a job. Now, now it says there that some of them didn't get paid, and I get that. If they are not expecting pay on Thursday and they don't get it till Friday, they didn't get paid. Or, you know, there's a whole... You can make these stories sound really bad without getting information at, at hand. Now, I think it couldn't happen to a nicer group because I think um, a lot of what they get into Parliament on is BS. And uh, they've got, do you know anybody that doesn't want the planet as nice as possible? Because I don't. Do you know anybody that doesn't want a a really green, clean air and and a a clean um, waterway? I don't know anybody that doesn't want that. So they talk like they're the only ones that want it. Well, what they really are is they're they're, um, completely commo in the middle. They want to give away everybody else's money as fast as they can and let's have taxes for this and taxes for that, and we could have free dental care if we tax the rich. That's not free dental care. That's the rich paying for your dental care. Mm -hmm. And then why would they pay the dental care 
the, the, the people that have got the money have taken risks and done all sorts of things to get to where they want to go. But the Greens are the lot that say, no, we'll take as much of that as you can until it's almost not worth being in business, and that'll learn you. Yeah? Well, I think with some stories like that, maybe there's more to this story about Darlene Tana than meets the eye. Well, you know, I just said to Lindley before that um, the Green Party puts the mental into environmental. <laughs> I hear you. That's a very good line. But, um, you know, I spoke to Matt McCartan uh, uh, earlier in the show, and um, and he, he said to me uh, something that was quite interesting, saying, uh, you know, that uh, there is seems to be a systemic problem in the Green Party where, uh, and, and he believes that their processes for selection of candidates are dreadful, and they end up with these uh, shrill uh, protest type people who have no abilities in any way, shape, or form for anything else, uh, who posture, uh, preen themselves, think that they're all that in a bag of chips, uh, and have a sanctimonious air about them that, that they can do no wrong, and then get all indignant when you point out some of the flaws in their uh, thinking, uh, and and then uh, continue to bellow and and carry on with no actual depth or any sort of human resources management or people management or anything like that. And that's what Winston said last week too. He said he thinks that, you know, Golrez Garriman was clearly in, in had issues uh, that would have been obvious to the Green Party, but they did nothing about it. And uh, that's not the way uh, a political party should act. And you and I both know an, an MP who uh, who was chucked under the bus by his own party in a similar fashion. And when you hear the other side mm. of the story, it's a whole lot different, isn't it? When you're in a meeting with someone and they're saying really um, things that you just can't you just can't have go public, true or not true, you just can't have them. They're just absolutely character damning things, and they're saying we can get people that will um, testify to this, true or not. And you think, wow, that, that's pretty interesting. But but back to um, the Greens, what they've got is. They seem to reward whoever's the loudest protester or whoever is the, the loudest and most risque at their um, what they're prepared to do in a form of protest, rather than who's got the most brains and has got a, a, something to offer that the New Zealand public are looking for, rather than just, like, what are they for? They're against everything, but what are they for? Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that. You know, that, that's the thing. So let's that, get rid of fossil fuels so that because people die of cold rather than heat. Mm. And they're saying, oh, the tide will rise, this will happen, this will happen, the, the climate change, climate change. And, and you look and you think, we're spending a trillion dollars. If we spent it on technology to make bigger walls that will stop the tide coming in, we could do that with trillions of dollars. Well, the, like, the, man has been able to work away around every problem. Yeah, the Dutch have been doing it for centuries. It's not that difficult. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just, I struggle to see what their point is. You know, they go, oh, mm. Dan, Dan has done some things that are uh, not, don't fit with the Green Party. Well, well, why didn't you check that out before she became an MP? You know, I, I know the yeah, national has selection processes. I know the Labour Party has selection processes where they ask them to disclose things and then they go and dig into their background and they have people in teams that actually go and rattle a few cages. And some some people never make it past pre-selection because there's too much rubbish in their past. But the Greens don't seem yes. to have Well, what, what they seem to have is... Um like all the, all the things that she's meant to have done wrong happened before they came into government. So clearly, it wasn't like she did it subsequently. It was done prior. Yep, and they just throw them under the bus with political expediency. This is the thing. I mean, you got to see it yourself. Uh, the the uh, duplicitousness of political parties when they want to get their own way. They're quite prepared to literally throw people in front of trains. Um, but <laughs> this, this is what the Green Party's doing right now. They, they, they've decided that Darling Turner doesn't fit. And so it looks like, and we, and we don't know because we haven't seen the report, even though the taxpayers paid for it, 
we don't know what the substance is of those allegations. They're only allegations, and it could be a case of he said, she said. Mm. But what's interesting is that you and I paid for that in um, what is it, the Green Party, um, the, the, the leader of the party's sort of stipend that she's got to spend money on anything she wants, but that's taxpayer money. It's not green money. It's, it's taxpayers' money. And then, oh, yeah, we might show you the fruit one day. Yeah, good, eh? Yeah. No, nice for some. Yeah, and, and at the same time, they've been bellowing about the National Party not producing the Sam Uffindle report. Yeah, you know, you constantly see the Green Party talking about that. Where's the report on that? Well, well, the same can go the other way. It just seems that the Green Party is, you know, shielded with um, a shield of sanctimony and wrap themselves up in a cloak of hypocrisy when it suits. Yep, and the media don't challenge them hardly at all, well, which all... always amazes me. I mean, if you look at people like, um, uh, you know, the the guy on One News. Um, Little little upstart with an affected voice, and you know John Campbell. Sorry, it is. Oh, he's, he's on, so. F- he's on three, I thought. Well, he, he used to be on three. He's on one now. Um, right. He he's a sanctimonious Green Party supporter. You know, you saw him give an interview um, uh, with Golrez Garriman. That was like a big cuddle for for like half an hour. Yeah, I've come up with. Really soft effort questions, and oh, you aren't even a very good thief. Well, yeah. that, how do you know that? You didn't bolt with fifty dresses previously, and this is the last two. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Matt McCartan said. He said, "What? I can't believe that they're letting you get away with excuses like I, I felt like I wanted to get caught, or I wanted to um, quit mm-hmm. Parliament, and this was the way to do it." And he said, "In my world." You don't want to be there anymore. You just say, I'm resigning because of family reasons, goodbye, and walk out the door. Yeah, it doesn't seem that harsh. Not harsh at all. All right, Paul, thanks for your views on Darlene Tana and the Green Party, and we'll talk again next week. All good. Thanks, Cam. Bye for now. Thanks, Paul. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. G'day, Cam. How are you this week? Yeah, fantastic, mate. Always fantastic. And what's your topic this week, mate? Well, all the news is about Darlene Tyler and the Green Party, but uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on whether or not the problem is with their MPs or the problem is with the party or a little bit of both. Uh, There's a lot to unpack there. (laughs) Um, I think a lot of it is their selection process is um, selecting people on their race and um, other characteristics rather than actual merit you end up with a bunch of duds that meet all sorts of quotas. Do you think that's maybe, relevant? Maybe DEI stands for duds, idiots, and idiots. <laughs> well, how do you explain a party that just loses so many? I mean, National got heaps of hassle from the media a few years ago when you know they lost, was it the Southland MP? And then they lost Jamie Lee Ross, or yeah, I don't know which order it was. You in a quick... Succession, and everyone was saying, "Oh, what's the problem with the National Party? Do they have a problem with their selection processes? Like, all, of, yeah. all of those sorts of things." But it seems with the Greens, the media gives them a free pass. Maybe they're just as hypocritical as the Green Party are. Exactly, they give them rehabilitation. They give them soft stories in prime time. Yeah, it's like John Campbell it's just a half-hour cuddle session yeah, with Gary exactly. Garriman. Yeah, exactly. The, the Green Party is just not a Green Party at all. It's it's a basically communist party. I mean, if you think back to the party of Rod Donald and Jeanette for Simons, it's not even close to that. Well, they were genuine it's, people it's with just, beliefs, you know, and you could trust them. I wouldn't trust this Green Mob with anything. I wouldn't trust them to run a bath. No, I mean, the, the, Jeanette Fitzsimons was genu- genuinely a really lovely person, and but she was a compost person. She, you know, she was literally into the environment. Mm. And but I, how come it's attracted all these self? De- like I see the next on the list is the self declared communist. Mm. Well, I've seen I mean, it. Everybody, you know, um, the Green Party putting mental into environmental. Quite apt, but what's astonishing is their support stays rock solid, fifteen-ish. You know, other parties do dip and 
go up and down on a bad performance, but not the Greens. You know what that they is? Just don't, that people don't care. That's women voters in the leafy suburbs who think that the Green Party are all about the planet uh, without bothering to actually in, investigate you know, uh, the, their true policies, which are all communist. I mean, uh, a, f- a few years ago, um, David Farrer did an assessment of their website on all the things that they want to ban, and there was something like 200 or 300 things they want to ban, but there was nothing that they were for other than higher taxes. Oh, my God, it's just so depressing. <laughs> you, just, you can't tax your way to prosperity, eh? Yeah, you can't. The, you, um, can't you can't tax your way to prosperity. I did see a, a thing that said that women are between 18 and 49, if a woman only voted, we would have a Green Prime Minister. Mm. So it, it really is. Scary, a, isn't it? it really is, eh? But on the other hand, if you had men over 50 to 75 or something, it would be an Act Prime Minister. So I guess they could say that's equally as scary. Well, I think but, that the problem we have is uh, for basically uh, two and three quarters of a year, uh, voters just don't care what's going on. They're not engaged. They don't bother to have a look. And then we have an election campaign. In the last six weeks, people sort of sit up and take notice and then go, oh, oh that's the Green Party. Oh, they're, they're for the environment, aren't they? Oh, I'll vote for them. But like Paul said earlier in the show, you know, he doesn't know anybody who doesn't want clean water and clean beaches and, and pristine bush and all of those things. We all want the same things. But he said uh, it's all the other things that the Greens have that are that are frightening, that no, they don't seem to take into consideration. Well, they have no way or idea or way to generate wealth or generate productivity. That, that's what actually makes us rich. That's what makes us be able to afford publicised healthcare and publicised education and so on. There's no other solution to get money except tax. That's it. But you can't tax. Now, income, so if you kill the economy and everyone with money leaves, there's literally no money. The tax does nothing. You have nothing. What's the... But, so, you know, I see the anti-Shane Jones big time now, you know, because Shane's actually proposing some mining, which we need to do yeah. to stay wealthy. We can't just mine in poor countries and not mine in ours. We're, you know, it's, it's insane. Anyway, well, no, the, the, he's like... Cars, We've got to have all the electric cars with that cobalt that are picked out of dirty holes in the ground by small African children. That's okay because it's over there. We don't need to worry about that. And we can. Yeah, there's no labour laws. There's no environmental laws. There's no carbon capture laws. Nothing. But that's fine. Yep. It's not in our, our backyard. Dig out lithium from Mongolians and using small, you know, Asian children to dig in the holes for that. That's okay. That's over there. We can't see it. It's fine. You know, we can drive around in a cloud of smug in our in our Teslas and our you know Nissan Leafs, and we can be smug and we can say that we're we're better than anybody else. Can they get a bit of sense and say, well, we're going to let you mine, but we want strict environmental controls and negotiate some real heavy royalties or whatever to reinstate it or or you know whatever We've underground mine it or got those laws. That's the thing. We've already got things like that, but. You know, I mean, have you ever been to Northern Territory um, and driven past the Jabiru mine? I, I no, heard. No, right? It's a uranium mine in Northern Territory, right? And the Greens always yeah. bang on about, oh, you know, it's a hole in the ground, it's terrible. You can drive past it on the main road and you wouldn't know the mine was there. You can't even see it. Is it ginormous, though? It's, a, it's enormous, but so is Northern Territory. Yeah, you know? exactly. well, Australia is fortunate in that sense that their backyard is empty and just flat dust, right? We we do have a lot of bush, and so it's yeah. But where is Shane Jones? A lot more bush than we mind. As Shane Jones said last week, you know, we've got you know millions of hectares of um, of uh, of forest in New Zealand, and we want to use a couple of hundred hectares to create some mines. Like, get a grip, and he's right. No, I completely agree. I mean, the Denniston mine is starting to reinstate now, and I've had a look at that. You know, mm-hmm. bits of bush that they'd previously dug up, there's planting programs in place, and in 20, 30, 40 years, it'll all be back to normal, but we've extracted all the coal out of it, you know? Yeah, totally. So I think the Greens have got a lot to answer for. They're just making people poorer, 
They're just communists, mate. They need to be called out. We need a better media. We need the media that's going to call them out. We actually need ask some actual hard questions. Ask Chloe Swarbrick how she proposes to actually create wealth besides taxing. You know, until until that happens, we're just going to have idealistic people voting for them. Mm. You know? It just goes on, Cam. And probably the next generation of Greens will be worse because if you look at it from when... Did the Green Party start in the 90s? Uh, no, it's been around since the 70s in various different guises. They used to be called the value, <clears throat> the Values Party. Yeah, yeah, but this this version of it, the Green Party. Yeah, it kind of started anyway, in, in the, the 90s. In the 90s, right? Mm. But, you know, even Ru- Russell Norman isn't as bad as this lot, right? And it's just continually getting worse. So imagine in another 10 years, that, you know, they'll be just mind-blowing until we force them to change their name and stop stealing a good marketing campaign. Well, that's why that's they're what going to be in government. That's what Matt McCartan said earlier in the show. He said uh, the Green Party carries on going because they've got a cool colour scheme. <laughs> and But the, the, the good thing is that Whoever's the leader of the Labour Party, whether it's Chris Hipkins or whoever, they have to go into government with the Greens. Yeah. So they have to force them to be moderate, it's, and it's going to cause big problems. Like, there's, the left is always going to melt down because the right are a lot more pragmatic. Like, National will always have to go with ACT or Winston, and they can sort of put aside the differences and get on with the gains, whereas the left just can't. And so if you get Labour, you're going to get the Greens. And that's unavoidable. And you're going to get them and it, well. well, exactly. And at the moment, but you know, over the next five or ten years, who knows whether they'll survive? But yeah, so I, I quite like that. That people, I think that the right will go into the big campaign saying that a vote for Labor is a vote for the Greens, and you know that's pretty scary to your average Kiwi. Totally. Totally. All right. Cool, Cam. All right. Anyway. Thank you for your comments on that, and we'll talk again next week, eh? Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks, mate. See you. You can always rely on my buddies for truth bombs, and we certainly heard some there about the sagas going on inside the Greens. You have to wonder whether or not the mainstream media bothers to actually speak to people and understand what's going on. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.